Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you an application using linear and angular speed formulas. So what we have here is suppose P is a point on a circle with radius 18 centimeters. So let me just kind of give you a visual of what we have here and draw the best circle that I can. It's kind of hard to draw circles. Um, so what we have is we have a circle and P is some point on this circle. Okay, um, the radius of this is 18 centimeters. And ray OP is rotating with angular, so that's just telling us that our center is at the origin, or O. So this ray right here is rotating with angular speed pi over 15 radians per second. So it's rotating. And we're trying to figure out what is the angle that happens after 10 seconds. So this would be my P prime over here. So we started at this point here and then we rotated through the circle over to here after 10 seconds. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find here is we're trying to figure out what is this angle measure of opening and we're going to find it in radians um, rather than degrees. If you needed to, you could convert it from radians to degrees after you get your answer and I'll discuss that in a minute. Um, it's important to know whether you're looking for an exact answer. If you're looking for an exact answer, you're going to leave it in terms of pi. If you are not, if you're looking for an approximate answer, then you would go ahead and plug it into your calculator. So let's get started. We have to find all of the important information that we have. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at our formula and make sure we understand what everything means. So remember that this symbol right here is omega. It is not a W, it's the Greek letter omega. It's lowercase. And remember that omega represents the angular speed. So this right here would be our omega. Okay, and then 10 would be our time. So we would just plug those values in. So we would say that pi over 15 is equal to theta over our time of 10. So now what we need to do is we need to get theta by itself. So I would multiply both sides by 10 to cancel this out. And on the left hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify this. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and write theta first just so that we have the angle measure written first. And I can reduce the 10 over 15 because 5 goes into both of these, so this becomes 2 over 3. So our exact answer would be 2 thirds pi radians. And like I said, you can plug this into your calculator if you wanted to. Um, this would be the exact answer if you are looking for an exact answer. If it says to approximate so many decimal places, then you would just plug 2 thirds times pi into your calculator and you get approximately 2.0944. If you are working and finding more information afterwards, it's best to leave it as an exact answer. It's always best to wait to round until the very end. Okay. Um, remember that if you were trying to convert this, because sometimes they may say convert it to degrees, remember that to convert it to degrees, so if you need theta in degrees, Remember that we would just take the 2 thirds pi, and I'm just going to write it as 2 pi over 3, and then we would multiply it by 180 over pi. Okay, so the pi's would cancel out, and then we would just take 2 thirds of 180, which ends up being 120 degrees. So if it wanted the answer in degrees, you would um, convert it from radians to degrees. Um, if you want it as an exact answer, you would leave it in terms of pi, and this would be an approximate answer in terms of radians. Okay, um, so we found the angle theta generated by P in 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, it has rotated 120 degrees. So let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing that it wants us to find is it wants us to find the distance that was actually traveled. So how far did this actually go on the circle? What was the distance that was covered? So with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to use S equals R times theta. So if we remember and we go back up to the original problem, our radius is 18 centimeters. Okay, so that's going to be our R value. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use the formula s equals r times theta, like I said, and we found that r from our problem was 18, and the theta is going to be the value that we used in here, and I'm going to use the radians measurement. Okay, so you always want theta to be in radians when you are working with it, um, but sometimes you need to convert it to degrees, which is why I showed you that on the last one. So we're going to take our 2 thirds pi, and we're going to multiply it by 18. So when I do that, I end up with 12 pi centimeters. Okay, so this would be the exact distance that was covered. And then again, if they asked you for the approximate, all you would have to do is take 12 times pi and you get approximately 37.6991 centimeters. Okay, so that would be the distance that was traveled. So if I were actually to take and measure this distance, straighten it out, that is the distance traveled. We have one more thing that we are going to find with this. And the last thing that we are going to do is we're gonna find the linear speed v of p in centimeters per second. So we're going to take the information that we've been working with, and our s is going to be the value that we found in the last one, so that's our going to be our 12 pi centimeters, and our time is 10. Okay, so we're gonna take our 12 pi centimeters, and then we're going to divide it by our time, which is 10 seconds. And so if we simplify this, we end up with six pi over five centimeters per second. Okay, um, so again, this would be your exact value. And if we converted this into an approximate, we would just plug this into our calculator and we end up with 3.77 centimeters per second. So the linear speed that this point is traveling is 3.77 centimeters per second. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.